I'm Abigail and I'm a professional photographer. Now I love weddings. I love shooting weddings and every time I shoot a wedding it makes me want to get married all over again. Now if I can advise you, one of the most important things is being comfortable with your photographer. If you have a comfortable relationship with your photographer, it's going to show in your photos. That's why I always offer a free engagement shoot with all my couples. We can get to know each other, we build a relationship based on trust and it shows in the photos at the end of the day. I'll leave you my details at the end of this episode. Now for the segment on the different styles of wedding photography, being traditional, contemporary and photojournalistic or reportage. Let's have a look. I want to share with you the first of our series of on the day wedding photography tips. I mentioned earlier the different styles of photography, traditional, contemporary and reportage. You need to know what they are before you can decide whether you like them. Traditional style is the formal posed shots that you see in wedding photos from decades past. Looking at these photos, you'll recognize them as the kinds of shots you'll always expect to see in a wedding album. They basically serve the purpose of proving that it was a wedding and providing evidence of who attended on the day. You can see here that we have edited these traditional shots to add a bit of interest, but on the whole, there is not too much in terms of creative flair. However, they are still important images that need to be included. Contemporary shots have much more direction and purpose and gives the photographer more creative license. In these shots, you'll see the surroundings, the lighting and props play a much more significant role. The photographer will be able to set a scene and tell a love story in one photo. Here, we have told the couple how they should pose in order to make it an interesting shot. Contemporary shots also include the finer details of the wedding, which would otherwise go unnoticed. The flowers, the rings, etc. all included. Reportage or photojournalistic style is a wedding documentary approach. Here, you'll notice that while the shot is being taken, the subject isn't aware of it, unobtrusively capturing the events as they happen. These are the most natural photographs, and when creatively edited, really add a personal touch to the collection of photos. It's a look at the raw emotion on the day. So, I hope that cleared up the different styles of photography for you and helped you understand the approaches in a better way. Now, do you want to know a little bit more about your camera? Have a look at this section. In today's episode, we will try and get away from the automatic setting on your camera and show you how to take control of the final picture that you will see on your screen. We'll discuss what the aperture setting does and how it controls depth of field. Don't despair, it's a lot easier than you might imagine. I will presume that your camera has a setting for automatic or maybe even a program mode called P and also a setting for aperture and shutter speed. You needn't have a digital SLR camera. Here's a much older point and shoot camera, but with settings for aperture and shutter speed. Note that some cameras have a different abbreviation for these. Some will denote shutter speed with a T and some with an S. You'll have to review your camera's manual to see what is what. Before we make any settings changes, we need to understand how a camera decides how bright or dark the scene is that you are shooting. Well, basically it tries to make things neutral. It does this by setting three things. The sensitivity of the sensor to light, called the ISO. The amount of light that falls onto the sensor. And the time that light is allowed to fall onto the sensor, called the shutter speed. We needn't worry about the ISO setting for now. The amount of light that falls onto the sensor is controlled by the aperture. This is just a fancy word for the round hole between the lens and the sensor. The hole is made up of blades that move and make the aperture bigger and smaller. A bigger hole lets in more light and a smaller one lets in less. So when your camera is on automatic, it will evaluate the brightness of the scene and open and close the aperture appropriately. There's just one thing to remember. It scares many people off, but once you understand it, that's it, it's done. I won't go into the technical explanation, but what you have to remember is that the numbers you can choose for your aperture setting is in reverse. 
So a small number means a larger hole and more light gets in, and a larger number means the hole is smaller and less light gets in. These numbers are called f-stop numbers. So when you set your camera on its A setting, called aperture priority mode, you control this f-stop number. Remember again, a smaller f-stop number means a larger hole and more light gets in. You might be wondering, what if it's a bright scene and I've chosen a small f-stop number, meaning a larger hole? Won't I overexpose the shot? Well, no. That is why it's called aperture priority mode. Remember, we said the camera makes three decisions. ISO, aperture and shutter speed. In aperture priority mode, you have taken control of the size of the hole. For any given ISO setting, the camera will adjust the shutter speed. So in our example of a bright scene, it will adjust the shutter speed to make it quite fast, so that the sensor is exposed to all that light that comes in for a very short time, hence the shot is well exposed. In the end, the exposure will exactly be the same as in automatic mode, but it gets there with a different sized hole decided by you and a different shutter speed chosen automatically by the camera. Why do we want to do this if the camera does it all for us? Well, the answer is that taking control of the aperture allows you to control the depth of field. We have all heard of depth of field. In short, it refers to those images where the subject is well focused, but everything in front or behind it is out of focus. Now here comes the second fact that you have to remember. The larger the hole, in other words, the smaller the f-stop number, the shallower the depth of field. I will repeat this. To get a shallow depth of field, which means only your subject is in focus, you need a large hole, and that is a small f-stop number. Look at this lens. It is a 135mm prime lens with an f-stop number of 2.0. Here's a 45mm tilt and shift lens with an f-stop number of 2.8. You'll see these numbers on all lenses. On many zoom lenses, there will be two numbers, such as 4 and 5.6. These refer to the size of the largest hole on that lens. So for our 135mm lens, it is 2.0. If I take a photo at f2, the depth of field will be very shallow, and if I change it to f16, many more things in my photo will be in focus. Let us have a look. We'll just take an image of a bland subject and start with an f-stop of 2.0, and then change to f16, and look at the difference. You can really improve your image by taking control of the aperture size. See you again soon. That's it for this episode. Hope you found that useful and informative. If you would like to talk to me about your wedding, please connect with me on Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter or follow my blog on blog.photographer.co.uk. I'd love to hear from you, so feel free to drop me a line. If you're a wedding service provider in the Bristol area and would like to have your products and services featured in the series, please email me on abigail at photographer.co.uk. Until next time.